This is the last tombstone I made for the Secret Reaper gift exchange on Halloween Forum. It's called Revenge. And this one is like a sculpture inside of a tombstone. It looks simple, but it's actually pretty complicated. So there's a longer video than most, but I got some cheats to help it uh, save you a little time. <laughs> uh, I imagine that uh, somebody had buried him alive. He was standing upright and they formed the tombstone over him. He tried to get out. So to make it, you're going to place, this is a mask from Trick or Treat Studios, and place it where you like it and then tack it into place with your glue gun because you're gonna flip it over and cut it out. I know, it's terrible. <laughs> but make sure you cut it out below the line and now fill in the areas as much as you can because you're going to be putting in great stuff. Save the back of the head because I have it protruding out the back, so marking where that is gonna be. And now that they're both kind of ready, you want to make sure that any eye holes and nose holes are all put in with your glue gun and then the great stuff. <laughs> Messy. And the next morning, this kind of popped out. So you want to check yours. I had this upside down. Pull that out and then let it continue to cure. Unfortunately, it pushed out the nose and I didn't want that to happen. But it's still workable. I got close. So you may want to have your mask pushed in a little bit more. <laughs> Shave off the excess on the back so now it's flush with all of your uh, your tombstones when you stack them together. And then it's protruding out so you wanna make sure it's as close as you can. So do like little steps. Cut out a little bit and then see where you need to cut out more and keep doing that. And this tool is really awesome. It's a curved blade and it makes these great gravelly uh, pieces and you wanna save those. Again, he's breaking out. To glue all together, use a combination of foam board glue and glidden gripper. And you want to make sure, again, you have a tight seal because you don't want a lot of water intrusion. And so finish that up, any open areas with some more foam board glue. And you could also use some pink snow stuffed in there uh, to any larger gaps. And then use a uh, like white glue, this is foam fusion to help hold that all into place. This little pair of scissors, when dragged across foam, leaves embedded pieces of gravel, which is a nice effect. Now for the hand, you want to determine, you know, where you want that to be protruding out and then get as tight of a fit as you can because you'll be uncovering those fingers. So you want to have some foam behind there and the thumb is put underneath the base because that's going to emerge. Use your shaver to make all the layers of it even and then use your shoulder to give you an idea what a shoulder looks like <laughs> and smooth it down. You can use this little uh, sander here and also use some uh, wood filler to smooth it out. Use a lot of water to make it thin and it makes kind of a skin texture. For the fingers, you see a picture of Hubby's hand. I said, give me a grimace <laughs> and use that as a model. For the epitaph, there's several layers because it's graffitied on there. So put it on first so you, you're not overlapping anything. And then when you're carving epitaphs, there's three ways to do it. You could do it with a hobby knife, you could do it with a Dremel, or you could do it with a hot wire knife, an engraver. So different options. And now chip away those fingers, the shoulder, anything that needs to look like he's emerging, and then glue it all together, the base onto the plywood. Wanted to make it look like it was just poured gravel. So using the shaver to give it a rough look and then those scissors again to pop in and just make it very, very rough looking. Now those pieces of gravel that you saved, put those back in to give the illusion that he was shaking and pieces of gravel was falling out. And for a big pile, you could just do a lot of glue. Now I wanna remind you, take a picture of the mask cause you're getting ready to dry lock it and so you want to have a reference because you're going to paint that back. And it is all ready to be dry locked now after the acetone treatments and putting in cracks and wood filler. 
After dry locking, use some flat black paint and a very thin brush to add some separation for the pieces of your gravel so it looks like it's literally just tumbled out of the stone. And now you're going to do your tea staining step. Kind of gone over that in other videos, but wanted to show you a couple things I tried. This one was fun. <laughs> I did not tape this last experiment, but what I did is I took actually more paint than water tea stain and did just tiny little dabbles, just ding, ding, ding at the top here. And because it was still wet and the paint was so concentrated, you, you really get a nice variation. So I wanted to just kind of take a moment and show the effect that you get. Your color lesson for today. I'm using blood because it's a gory tombstone and I have the color of his face. So those are basically red and yellow. So what is a good color? Well, on the color wheel, it would be the, the triad, so blue. And I have three blues. This one, eh, looks kind of clownish. This one, eh, pretty bright. I don't think I like that one. But what about this blue? Ah, that's the right blue. So that's what I'm going to use my graffiti paint for. And using a stencil, painted that on. This blue is translucent, so I had to go over it several times. But now it looks like, boy, that person's mad at this guy. <laughs> when you dry brush, spend a lot of time with that gravel so it pops out and looks like gravel. The final two tea staining has raw umber and some burnt sienna, or raw sienna and burnt umber in it, and it leaves behind this muddy look to it when it settles down, which is awesome. It looks like mud in the gravel. All right, hope you took that picture because now you gotta paint that mask back to life. Some of those black lines probably got muddied in all these painting processes, so bring them back. And uh, you could put in some, some hair, use some thin glue, and did layers of hair for the back of his head to make this tombstone extra kind of yui. <laughs> and this is blood from Pale Night Productions, which I love because it, it, it drips down just like blood. So give it some time and see what looks you want. You don't want to go too crazy with the blood. Well, we're done, and I wanted to thank my Sicker Reaper victim, Sick and Twisted, who came up with his like of gore, and wow, loved it. Blood on a tombstone looks kick butt. So does the graffiti. So I hope you liked it. I loved making it. This is a, I think we we succeeded in doing a, a revenge-themed tombstone. Well, anyway, uh, thanks everybody for checking out another tutorial. Um, Hey, have a great Christmas. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>